Well, look where we are. Funchal, Madeira. One of our favorite places, I have to be said. And the immediate thing you might notice is two very large floaty things in the water. The cruise ships are back. So it's probably been, what, two years, hasn't it? Since we've seen any cruise ships around. So in the last couple of days, we've had a few come into port here. And just down in front too, just in front of that cruise ship there, the Ida Blue one, see the CR7. So that is, it's a, it's a museum, it's a hotel dedicated to uh, Ronaldo. So Ronaldo is one of Madeira's most famous sons. Not the only one. And then we just have a look over here. Ah, you see the magnificent bay of Funchal. So you notice, by the way, I say Funchal after years and years uh, being British, as I am, of calling it Funchal and calling it Madeira instead of Madeira. I've been corrected several times. So, Funchal Bay. And the bay itself is one of the reasons why this place is so popular at Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. One, it's a little bit of a microclimate in itself, but on New Year's, this is a site of incredible firework display. And up until a couple of years ago, it would win all the awards for the biggest and best in the world. I think that's recently been taken now by Sydney. Well, the great thing about the situation being a bay is that not only as you looked out to sea, you'd see this magnificent display of fireworks, and it really is quite incredible, but it would be replicated all the way round the edge of the bay so that you could stand in the middle and no matter where you were looking, in which direction, you would see fireworks. And really not just any fireworks. It's probably the first time, I think I probably saw the fireworks here maybe 10 or 15 years ago. And it's the first time I saw fireworks in patterns. So it's as if it managed to sculpt exotic flowers and plants out of thin air. So we're heading through a little park here, Park Santa Catarina. You may have noticed already just the sheer abundance and variety of plants here. And this is one of the great draws, of course, to the island. So no matter where you live in the world, probably many of the house plants that you recognize you're going to find here, just dotted around. This is where they grow naturally. Let's come down. We're going to head down onto the seafront. If you find yourself in this park and you ever need a loo, that's what we in Britain call a toilet. There's one just out here to the right. All very important. Uh, this is a bit well trafficked today. It's not people around because it's been raining a hell of a lot. So we've had storms over the last few days. Unbelievable storms. And a lot of rain. But the sun's out. And so we're all out. Locals and tourists alike. And of course also that we got the two big cruise ships in. So they're letting people off. And of course what we had 
because of the storms, we had two days of backup of flights. So yesterday was the, the first brief reprieve in which planes could land and take off. And in one day, they might have set a record, we had 120 departures and arrivals. And for a small island like Madeira, it's quite impressive. So, let's make our way across the road. So here on Madeira, here comes her crossing. Thank you very much. Just take a walk across. So the other thing you may not know about Madeira, it's it's quite exciting getting here. Uh, the, most of the journey itself is not that exciting. It's the last two or three minutes. So Madeira has probably the most extreme uh, airport, shall I say, in Europe. Probably the most difficult landing. And so it's always um, quite exciting to come down, um, come through the cloud layer. And um, some time ago, they had to extend the runway. So it's the only runway I've seen in the world where they've ex extended it out. They built it out over the sea. And you can drive underneath. There's a road that takes you underneath as you go around the island. And it's to see underneath, it's quite a, quite a feat of engineering. It's like, a, like some great Greek temple underneath all the the towers and the pillars that support it. But anyway, landing is no mean feat for pilots, and I believe uh, pilots have to be specially trained. So it's not everyone that can do it. You have to be fully trained, be tested. It's good fun. So here we're just walking past, you notice then. So in the harbour area, Got some water sports going on, lots of locals out. Not entirely sure that I'd want to be falling into that water. You can see out to sea out there, and just out there, somewhere, uh, we've got um, Porto Santo. So, Porto Santo is uh, one of the islands off Madeira. It's a popular place, particularly in the summer, because they have some great beaches there. It's a very small place. There's a couple of really nice hotels. There's a ferry that you can get. It'll take you over there. It takes about three and a half, four hours, I believe. I haven't taken it myself. We're thinking of doing that soon. You can see already. We got some of the uh, Christmas decorations up. Christmas again. So this is another reason why so many people come here because it's just, well, maybe you've seen some of the other videos that we've done, but in the evening, wow, it really comes to life. It is like a kind of fairy land. This little restaurant here, uh, we've got fond memories of this last year. Uh, we went out for a walk on Christmas Day, we were walking on the seafront. It looked dry when we left. Uh, when we were out, we got caught in a, um, in a storm. The rain was coming down horizontally. We managed to get in here and uh, they made space for us. And we had a lot of Christmas dinner here right out the back with a lovely view over the harbour. Oh look, today you can be the bus driver. This is a little ticket booth. It's quite cute. So you're starting to see some of the uh, architecture as well We've crossed the road there. And this is one thing again that makes Madeira such a, a delight on the eye. It's architecture, it's detail. So on the walkway in front of us, as you see, the mosaic. So it's not pavement, it's all hand-chiseled, 
hand laid. Yeah. So, Funchal Harbour. There's a couple of restaurants you can go down to, down there. As you can see, you can sit out overlooking the water. When we first used to come here, uh, some of this wasn't here, especially some of the building work that we'll see later on. Uh, there used to be some floating restaurants, so boats tethered up, and you could wander down and you could pick one and you could jump aboard and have a meal. And there's one in particular we remember, and it seems to be everyone else we talked to remembers, and that was the Beatles boat. That's right, dedicated to the Fabulous Four. We had a few meals on there, I think it's quite nice. And then one year we came back and, oh, no boats. Well, they all gone. So apparently there was a huge storm and it took them off. And at that point, I think the government decided we're going to build up the area at the front, make it more suitable for increasing number of tourists that are coming. Looking out, seeing the sweep of the bay ahead of us. You can see some of the lights right around the trees. Obviously, not a light at the moment. But come down here about six o'clock at this time of year. They all burst into life. So, coming up on one of the many traditional little cafes. So, great places for a little snack, for a coffee. So if you're going to buy a coffee here in Madeira, a couple of things you can ask. You can just say, I'll have a coffee or Americano or a latte. But, you know, it's going to be a bit more of a local and also not pay so much. Um, I think if you ask for a beaker, so this and an espresso, standard espresso. If you want what's more like a, an Americano, and you would ask for a Shino. Yeah, Shino. And like me, if you like milk in your coffee, a little bit of froth on the top, like a little latte, you can ask for a Schneezer. A Schneezer. If you're into the whole alternative milks, um, not everywhere is going to do them. You'll probably more likely find a couple of places that might do oat milk. Uh, generally, otherwise, it's going to be the full-on cow's milk here, but still lovely. Uh, if you want decaffeinated coffee, then it's, I believe it's descaffeinado or descaffeinada. So if it's chino descaffeinado, chinesa descaffeinada. Or, to be honest, you can just say, can I have a decaffeinated latte? Because everyone in tourism speaks just fantastic English, I have to say. Now here, so you might have seen this in one of our earlier videos, we have the, the tunnel, which lights up in the evening. And it's, uh, it's a full-on animated display in here, which is amazing. So uh, all the lights inside create wonderfully changing pictures. It's all it's all time to music. I think it repeats every 10 minutes or so. You can start to see, so all this area here again, talked about the storm that happened all those years ago. Uh, so this is all part of the new works. And again, just across over there, right in front of us where you can see those palm trees. So that's one of the areas in particular where you stand coming to watch the fireworks. So last year, very impressive. Uh, the whole seafront was cordoned off into, into individual squares all mapped out on the floor. And so everyone kept social distancing, incredibly well policed here.
just over there where the masts are so you can take a number of trips you can take uh, trips out to the uh, islands I think but mainly also um, a lot of dolphin watching a lot of whale watching happens here to take you out on a catamaran so we did that a little while ago and yeah we saw dolphins quite impressive and generally all the all the companies will say anyway if you fail to see anything one day they'll just give you a free ticket and you come back the next day and you keep doing that until you eventually see something and as I say first time lucky for us we saw dolphins it also takes you along the cliffs it's quite a long trip a couple of hours so it's right up to sea it takes you along the cliffs towards uh, Gabo Giral which is a, a lookout point it's a little bit further away from a very famous little bay here a little fishing village called uh, Kamala de Lobos oh let's have a look over here well, actually let's just turn up this way a second Give you a little view. A promenade. So, just up there on a street running parallel to this, you'll find some wonderful cafes and shops. You'll find a cathedral. You're also going to find the um, Christmas market that they're there at the moment. But here, so the new signage. So Madeira's had a bit of a refresh. So you can see, very colorful, very modern. And I think Madeira in the past has generally courted uh, an older population because it's such a beautiful island, and because of its plant life. And also because generally it's not full of big sandy beaches that would attract families but over the years making more effort to appeal to the younger generation and so if you come here anyway you'll find there's things like canyoning there's buggies you can go diving here do paragliding and there are a couple of beaches here so we have a few there's a few black sandy beaches but you'll find one not too far from here, Praia Formosa, which is just on the way to Camaro de Lobos. Have you fancied having a long walk along the front? We've also got two sandy beaches, and the sand's been imported from Morocco, I think it is. Because believe it or not, I mean, this feels like Europe, but of course, we're just off the Moroccan coast, effectively. We're closer to Africa. And those two beaches are, I believe, Caleta and Mashiko. So, you probably see some um, videos of Mashiko. We've uploaded a few. So, it used to be the capital city here many years ago. It was moved here. But it's still a lovely little place. It's just on the other side of the airport. And you can catch a bus. In fact, not that bus there, but there's another bus stop about 20 yards ahead of me on the left and catch a bus from there to Mashiko. The buses here, so there's a number of different companies. So the yellow buses here, we're going to take you all around the district of Funchal. And what you can do is if you want, you can buy a little top-up card at a newsagent or a ticket booth and that will get you discounted travel. You just tap the card on the card reader as you enter. I think you don't get charged about one euro thirty-five for a journey anywhere in the in the city here. If you pay as you enter the bus, I think it's about one ninety-five. And you got the longer distance buses. You got Roto Est, uh, which takes you to the west of the island. And they are, you can see across the road there, there's a little browner looking bus. In front of that, you can see a SAM bus to the right. So SAM, again, it'll be a SAM bus that would take you to Mashiko, which is out to the east. Just 
just take a moment with you. Look at that. You don't see a site like that very often, do you? It's got the old gate down there, just behind that motorcyclist. You've got that lovely building behind it. It's a lovely square at the back, which we might go and have a visit, actually. And then looking up above, there we are. We see the hills above Funchal. And up that way, too, is Mont. So you might have heard of Mont's. If we follow this road along, we come to a cable car. And a cable car will take you up, up onto the hill above the city. And Mont is particularly beautiful. You have to catch it on a, a clear day. And you can always tell because you can just look up at the, the hills behind us and see what the clouds are doing. Mont is a lovely little area. It's a little bit cooler than down here. The cable car will take you right up. And when you get off, there's a little botanical gardens up there. There's some lovely cafes with spectacular views, I've got to say. You can also catch another cable car from there. It's going to get a little bit noisy now because obviously we're going past the fun fair. So we might have a little turn off in a minute, I think. Actually, I'm going to stop talking for a little while. We'll get past this and I'll continue talking about Mont in a minute when we get to the cable car. Just take note of the uh, little testing tent here. I'll talk about that in a minute as well, once we just get past some of this racket. So the testing tents first, I'm going to talk about a mountain a little bit. So the testing tents at the moment, uh, if you're planning to come here to visit. Uh, the requirements at the moment, so this is, Jan uh, this is December, isn't it really? I'm getting ahead of myself there. So the requirements at the minute are that you're double vaccinated or that you've had a recent PCR test like that's negative, of course. And while you're here, you are offered a free antigen test once a week. And so several venues will require that you show that negative result. So for instance, the Christmas market, which is back in the center of town, some of the shows, maybe any performance at the English church, which is where a lot of outdoor uh, performances happen. You'll see adverts for the English church all over the place. Uh, there too, you'll need a a negative antigen test but as I say they're offered free it's only at the moment so hopefully that will continue and I think definitely is one reason why Madeira is being so welcoming so helpful to bring tourists here now I'm sure this means something it's a little bit lost on me at the moment. If you know the answer, do feel free to pop it in the comments. Here we see some of the Rodest buses parked up. Actually, you can just see through there. That's one of the bus terminals. There's some of the uh, yellow buses. Coming up to the cable car station in a moment.
at the end of this promenade see that yellow building there well there's a lovely restaurant in there and there's a little secret just around from there if you follow this path along the secret little swimming cove with a very nice little local bar so all the locals swim off as you'll notice not always easy to find an easy way into the water now let's do a bit of outdoor crossfit this is where we come also here the other side of the bus station more buses and taxis uh -huh. and you probably noticed rising up majestically into the hills above us cable car so you can buy different tickets with a cable car you can buy a ticket just to uh, take you up there there's a different number of ways of getting down there are buses a couple of buses you can get you can take the famous toboggan okay this is a sled that's got just wooden runners on the bottom and two gents in straw hats dressed in what look like cricket whites will push you down the hill and it's it's quite fun it's quite exciting i think it's about um it's about 30 euros for two people it only takes you halfway down so at some point you may need to get off um, there'll be a lot of taxi drivers down there offering to drive you down but you can also just uh, look out for a bus uh -huh. so here's the prices for the cable car is c2 if you want to if you want to visit the botanical garden you can get an all-in-one ticket oh skate park over there it's a little wander over And there, as we see, have another look up. We can see all the pylons rising up to the first station. It's Mont. And again, that's where you'd get out. If you wanted to take the toboggans, the baskets down, then you'd turn left as you come out of the station at the top. You would pass one of the botanical gardens you'd also find there's a, a big church up there can't remember what it's called famous though because a Hungarian emperor was exiled there and uh, died in the vicinity so you'll see a plaque about that if you just want to walk around Mons then you can turn right at the top there's a couple of nice places to sit with balconies to look over the hills below and also there's a couple of Levada walks that go from here a particularly nice one again if you come to the end turn right out of the cable car and follow that along you pass the other cable car station that takes you over to the other botanical garden and you can follow that path it used to be called the the tea shop Levada so bearing in mind you'll be walking about two hours or so and you do need a map to be doing this uh, there used to be two shops um, two tea shops the Hortensia uh, which is now closed and is up for sale and you have the Jasmine Tea Garden which is still there you can take a little break there and then just below you if you take some steps out from the Jasmine Tea Garden there is a bus stop to conveniently bring you back to Funchal. So that can be a quite nice walk. Again, you're probably looking at a couple of hours to do that. Again, make sure you get a map. So this is part of the old town. It 
what's quite nice about it is some of the artwork on the walls, on the doors. And the road behind here is famous for its restaurants and it's famous too for the artwork on the doors. So it makes a nice little afternoon out to come down here, have something to eat and then wander along, maybe take some pictures of the doors. We're probably not going to cover that today. Locals out at play. Tourists and locals out at play. So I'm going to take you into there's a little square just up here. A few nice places to eat. Quite picturesque. see drinking water taps now and again around the city uh, safe to drink see quite a few cats too and of course in this area in particular some painting artwork but here this is where we're going to leave you This place comes alive in the evening, lots of lights, lovely feel to it, lots of choice of places to eat or just to sit for a drink. And so, that's our first little walk around Funchal, Madeira, hope you've enjoyed it, hope you meet us on the next one.